Community Awareness Video on Children by Group Number Three. I am Siona Gonzalez, Role Number Fifteen. I will be talking about the problems faced by children in slums. Despite India ratifying the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children in 1992 to work towards child rights, we still have a long way to go. India needs to use aggressive corrective measures to address malnutrition, infant mortality, low school enrollment and other issues. Identifying these issues with their complexities enables civil society government and individual strategies to resolve them. With social conscious corporations and citizens who donate to charity, child rights are today a cause for everyone. Children growing up in the slums experience childhood that defies of imagination of both innocent childhood proponents and the universal childhood advocates. The slums typically lack proper sanitization, safe drinking water, or systematic garbage collection. There is usually a severe shortage of space inside the houses where the children live, and no public spaces dedicated for their use but that does not mean that the children have no childhood only a different kind of childhood that sees them playing on rough uneven ground taking on multiple roles early on in life and sharing responsibilities with adults in domestic and public spaces in the community studies from delhi the national capital found 58 to 75 percent of slum children are underweight. A report suggests that 56,000 children succumb to death every year in urban slums in India due to malnutrition. Inadequate sanitization remains a leading cause of diarrheal disease and mortality among children in developing countries, particularly in urban slums. The global burden of disease study undertaken by World Bank indicates that 15% of all deaths in children under 5 years in low and middle income countries are directly attributed to diarrheal disease. The Policy Environment in India India deals with slums only through poverty alleviation strategies. Since 1980s, every 5 year plan has included strategies targeting the environmental improvement of urban slums through provisions of basic services including water supply, sanitization, night shelters and employment opportunities. Is it possible to create a new imagination of slum development within the current policies requirement of India? Following the liberalization of India's economy, in 1991, two landmark events unfold which may enable first the 74th constitution amendment of 1992 which processes that urban local bodies should have a direct stake in urban poverty alleviation and slum improvement and updating with participation of citizens. Second, the Jawala Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission launched in December 2005, which embodies the principles of 74th Constitution Amendment. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Mamta Mali, role number 22. My topic for today is Meaning of child trafficking is Any person under 18 who is recruited, transport, transferred, harbored, or received for the purpose of exploitation either within or outside a country. Any act or transaction where a child is transferred by any person or a group of people for money or any kind of other form of payment. Forms of trafficking are, it is a kind of sex trafficking, domestic servitude, factory and farm slavery, children in army, children in bondage army, Causes of child trafficking can be poverty, migration, political instability, militarism, civil unrest, natural disaster in homeland, lack of employment. 
what happened if we ignored uh, such a major topic like child trafficking more exploitation of children will happen children will suffer in silence it will continue to be ignored traffickers exploit more children without any fear of prostitution countries will continue to let this strategy happen raise awareness this is the only way where we can stop child trafficking when most people hear about child trafficking they want to take action there there are things you can do to help prevent human trafficking firstly you can learn more about it and speak out using your social media understanding the root cause of child trafficking helps prepare and protect potentially vulnerable children using the hashtag end trafficking and at the rate liberate child on your social media to help increasing awareness about child trafficking child trafficking awareness is the only key to understand and end this terrible practice awareness starts in the form of understanding where human obligations begin it is only a matter of child trafficking safety tips for children and parents so be aware of your here are some safety tips for children know your name address and phone number learn how and when to call 911 if you are scared of someone run to safety it is okay to be rude to grown up if you feel you are unsafe learn the importance between okay secret and not okay secret and be aware of adults that ask you to keep secret from your parents don't let anyone on the phone or at door know that you are alone at home if you ever lost in a mall ask the closest store clerk to help uh, where you are until you are found some tips safety tips for parents work hard to establish trust and communication with your children from day 1 don't ever leave children unattended in vehicle whether it's running or not make sure you know how to find or contact your children at all times have a call list of emergency contact and make sure your child knows the number for who to call if they can't reach you take an active role in children's activity here is some legal framework to address trafficking in india article 24 of the constitution prohibits employment of children below 14 years of age in factories mines or other hazardous employment section 366a procuration of a minor girl below 18 years of age from one part of the country to another is punishable child labor prohibition and regulation act 1986 prohibits employment of children in certain specific occupation and also lay down condition of work of children karnataka devdasi act 1930 1982 Goa Children's Act 2003 So the conclusion for the topic of uh, child trafficking would be trafficking in human beings especially children is a form of modern day slavery and requires a holistic multi sectoral approach to address the complex dimension of the problem In the fight against the traffic trafficking government organization non government organization civil society pressure group groups international bodies all have play an important role law cannot be the only instrument to take care of all the problem please save our children thank you
to child labor child labor is basically the term um, which is a children of below 14 years um, of age are not allowed to uh, are not allowed to work but they are forced to work um, because of some financial background uh, bad fa- poor fa- financial background so what we can contribute to stop this child labor we we uh, individual can um, can take a decision we should not we will not employ the child um, labor at our own house and we should ensure that our society also does not employ any child labor as well as we have to educate the um, employee who are taking the uh, we have to educate the employee um, who are employing the labor um, and the parents who are sending the child um, who are sending the child to work then uh, what happen if we even if uh, if we um, don't um, employ the uh, child um, parents will send somewhere else to their child for the work labor work so here what we can do uh, because of lack of um, educational knowledge uh, parents do this kind of uh, things so what we can do we individual can um, um, can explain this that uh, the education importance of uh, education advantages of education and uh, the uh, various government schemes are available and uh, which provides the free education to poor people as well as as well as uh, midi meals are uh, me- midi me- meals uh, scheme is available for government aiders um, in second case what happens that um uh, parents think that if we don't uh, send the child for labor uh, labor work then we will not get the money out of it so um and, uh, in such cases what we have to do we have we have to consult with the um, government ngos or private ngos there are lots of government and private ngos and also there is um, there is helpline child care helpline number 1098 is available for nine, uh, 24 hours for uh, for child uh, care so uh, the authorities um, if we come across such cases we can uh, we can uh, we can consult with the uh, ngos and uh, then authorities of the 1098 child uh, care center will take the uh, case forward and uh, they will they will uh, they will see the um, they will see the nature of the case and they will handle in that way and uh, even if possible uh, even if possible uh, they will provide the financial help as well. well and um, the authorities will not um, um, will will not at all take the harsh uh, measures against the parents but uh, rather they will uh, they would help um, uh, every way possible so uh, we have to stop the child labor uh, the j- la- labor uh, just by awareing uh, the parents who are sending them for the child labor thank you hello everybody my name is richa and i'm my role number is 26 and i'll be sharing a few inputs on child marriage at unicef we believe that child marriage is a form of violence against children child marriage is defined as a marriage of a girl or a boy before the age of 18 years and it refers to both formal unions and informal unions of the girl and the boy living um, as though they are married before the age of 18 years it affects both boys and girls and it affects girls disproportionately this takes place mostly in south asian countries south asia has the highest rates of child marriage in the world 45% of the women uh, they uh, between the age of 20 to 24 they've got married before the age of 18 and uh, one in every five girls ha- have got married before the age of 15 years In India is the largest number of brides in the world uh, ranking one third of the global total Bangladesh stands fourth in the world Nepal also uh, is one of the highest rate of child marriage in Asia of both boys and girls it is a uh, violence uh, um, against the children's uh, rights and it places them at very high risk of exploitation and abuse do we consider child marriage a problem yes it is a problem because it's a formal or informal union before the age of 18 wherein the girl is also go, uh, gets married to a uh, to an adult man who could be the age of her father it drops the children of the childhood 
and uh, it makes him vulnerable, especially to the girls, to violence, to discrimination and abuse. What are the main causes for child marriages? Child marriages have, have occurred throughout history and they're still prevailing. The reasons are, uh, there are a variety of reasons. It's poverty, insecurity, lower status given to the girls and considering them as financial burden, lack of education, low level of education to the girls, patriarchal and gender inequalities, social customs and traditions. poverty when experiencing acute poverty in the families girls they see marriage as a way to reduce the family costs so that there is one mouth less to feed they have less access to education they are they have no social standing in the society they have um they economically dependent on men so so then they see marriage as their only option Marriages also uh, takes place uh, used to repay the debts and manage disputes. If the girl's family has to pay a dowry, the amount may be less if she's young and uneducated. Gender inequality means the girls and the women are treated as second class citizens. They are denied of the human rights and values. The patriarchal system are controlled by men. They control how the woman dresses up, how she behaves, who she gets married to, uh, and many such things. Social norms are rules which is laid down by the society. This has been happening from generations, so it's become very normal and acceptable. In some contexts, when a girl becomes a woman and when she starts to menstruate, the next step is marriage for her to attain her status as a, as a wife and a mother. What are the effects of child marriage? Child marriage is a harmful practice. It denies a girl to take decisions of her well-being and, and her health. Children born to adolescent mothers, they have a greater risk of dying within the first year. Then there is increased risk of undernutrition sexually transmitted diseases, cervical cancer, malaria, premature birth, death during childbirth, and so many such effects. Child marriages has been declared illegal according to the PCMA Act 2006. It prohibits um, the girl getting married before the age of 18 and a boy getting married before the age of 21 years. It is a punishable offence with a rigorous imprisonment up to two years and a fine of one lakh rupees. And these offences are cognizable and non-bailable. Empower girls with information and skills. Give them high quality of education. Uh, provide economic support to the girls and the families. Be supportive to the laws and the policies. Since you've watched this presentation, 10 girls have become brides. Give them a chance to be girls and not brides. End child marriage. Thank you. Education is the most important component out of the various components of social uh, infrastructure. The well-educated and properly trained manpower can accelerate the pace of economic development. Despite our best efforts, our educational development still remains at low levels. Number one, neglect of Indian languages. The medium of instruction, particularly in science subjects, is English. So rural students who are not well versed in English cannot study science properly in English. They suffer a lot. Indian languages are still underdeveloped. Standard publications are not available in, in Indian language. Second, problem of brain drain. When intelligent, talented and deserving candidates do not get suitable jobs in the country, they prefer to go abroad for seeking jobs. So our country is deprived of good talent. This phenomenon is called brain drain. Number three is wastage of resources. Our education system is based on general education. The dropout rate is very high in primary and secondary level. 
Most of the students in 6 to 14 age groups leave the school before completing their education. It leads to wastage of financial and human resources. Number 4. General Education Oriented Our educational system is of general education in nature. Development of technical and vocational education is quite unsatisfactory. So, our education is unproductive. Hence, number of educated unemployed persons is increasing day by day. By day. This has become a great concern for government. The scope of the child rights makes it clear that a comprehensively designed program needs to address these issues. While governments and civil societies can work to give children access to their rights, the common public must also support an NGO initiative or campaign to ensure government initiatives are followed through. Grassroots activism is a vital guiding light to educate both children and adults and liberate children from a life of suffering.